Hey guys, and welcome back to Fringe Friday. I am Carmen, and today we are gonna be watching season one, episode 16 of Fringe. Last episode, we had a mini observer person, and <laughs> I, I think that they come from the same place, but he looked like the observer, but like tiny version without a suit. Um, we had Olivia being really good with kids. We had Walter being really good with kids. We had a nice Broyles moment. We had some nice Olivia moments. We had a cute Jean moment, you know? And we also had a serial killer. Um, yeah. I think that's really it though. So I am not going to ramble at you guys too much at the beginning of this episode. I am ready. So let's just get into the next one. Hello. Hey, it's Peter. Hi, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I assumed there was an emergency. No, no emergency. What's up? Nothing. I was actually calling for Rachel. Is she there? Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Liv, Wait, can we what? keep on going? Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Monsters aren't real, right? Well, oh, sweetheart, they're not. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, these are people who like to let the animals out. Right. Cameras are dark. Okay. You should really just like actually save them if you're gonna do this though, instead of just let them out. Finish up in here. I want to see what's behind this door. Do you want to see what's behind the door? It has a padlock on it. I would probably not go. Hold on a second. Don't don't open that door. Jonathan. Guy is Russian for a reason, and I am nervous. Stop right there! They're living creatures, and you murder them. You're a killer. You told me you didn't open that door in there. Yeah, you bet I did. Get out now, all of you. Get you out. You should be arrested. Experimenting on animals is a crime. Somebody shut her up. Go. Run. What do we do? Do we call the police? Yes, call the police. What is that? I don't know. I can't see anything. Oh, it's gonna get you. This genetically modified whatever the hell it is. Peter, no! Walter, we talked about sharing. That's not to eat. You've ruined it. It's an omelet. It's not an omelet. What's that? Uh... Oh. Just you look both ways when you cross the street. Yeah, but the difference being that if I don't, I'm the only one who gets flattened. You, Walter, you live in a society with other people. Hey. What? That was Olivia. <laughs> They're totally related. Whatever did this doesn't appear to be indigenous to the area. Oh, wherever it is indigenous to, I don't want to live there. It's not indigenous to anywhere, I don't think. This is quite delicious. Where Walter. did you get that? In the car, I'm eating. What is the matter with you? Yeah, you cannot eat that. There's no bearing on the case, I assure you. Yeah, but you don't know how long that's been out there. You should not eat that. That is not safe. All this stuff is from Junkie Genies. It's a fast food joint out by MIT. Hey. You have no chance to. Chris isn't here. I know. Yeah. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? I'm Carl. And no, I would love it. Okay, Carl, calm down. So this thing had the claws of a lion and the fangs of a snake? <laughs> it reminds me of a woman I once knew in Cleveland. A motley crew of lab animals got together and decided to exact their revenge on mankind. 
Astrid, let's look up labs in the area that do research with animals and see if any of them reported break-ins. I don't... Did they not report it? Because they have two dead bodies at that lab. It's always a monster. Monster must be housewife or raccoon. Oh gosh, no. You probably don't want to get this animal. What? We can talk about it? Let's talk about it. You called Rachel last night. Yeah. Anything important? Hardly. You know that song, If You Like Pina Coladas? We're trying to remember the name. Turns out it's called Escape. Mm. So you two are friends now. Does that bother you? Bothers yeah. me. Good heavens. What? Charlie just called. Animal Control got a call from a woman in Newton who claims that she nearly hit a monster on Route 30. So I'm gonna meet him there. Walter, is there something you wanna say? Be careful. Okay, can you elaborate? Please elaborate based off of what you were looking at in that folder. What was that all about? Nothing. No, I don't believe you. Just want her to be safe. Mm, don't believe you. I mean, I believe that you want her to be safe, but like what was in the folder? What did you pull out of that guy? What is that? Be careful, Charlie. Okay, it's the other guy. He's also dead. <gasps> Charlie! Olivia, Olivia, hurry. I think Charlie's in danger. Hurry, girl, girl. Charlie! Girl. Hurry. I don't want Charlie to get killed. Where's Charlie? Charlie! I'm alright. What is it? Did it bite him? What was it? Big. Can you elaborate? I saw the tail. The tail? Like uh, what the heck is that? Put the stinger in here, please. That that's what that's what Walter pulled out of that guy. Walter, why don't you share what you're thinking? Yes. I believe we may be dealing with a mm -hmm. transgenic species. Which is what? Yeah. So, um, animal creation. You're saying that you think the creature is man made. Yes. You wanted me to look into any labs that might house animals near the first crime scene? Yeah. Yep, that's them. You know, it's better to have an animal experience an allergic reaction to a certain perfume so that you don't have to. Is it? There was no break in. What you painting then? Mind if I take a look? Uh, not to be a rude host, but you actually do need a warrant. Hmm, convenient. That that's the moment you choose to whip out the you need a warrant. I'm afraid this is about me. Okay, good. Good. I found this book among my old files. What is this, Walter? Yes, elaborate. Where did you get this? Yeah. I tried to make it. Are you saying that you created this? No. Not this one specifically. My experiments were a failure. You knew that this was connected to your work, and you knew you had information that could help us, but you kept it to yourself. My creatures didn't survive. Someone else must have finished- Ah, uh, ah, uh, something's moving behind Astrid. Who were you working with? William Bell. Kelvin Genetics. Yeah. Hello, uh, guys? Do you remember anybody specific? No. Guys, his body is moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're still alive. Quick, unzip it, then we'll be suffocating. I don't think. <gasps> Larvae from the creature. You mean that these are baby monsters? It laid eggs. Stinger. Must carry the eggs. Is that that? That was in Charlie. Oh God, Charlie. Yeah. We need to get Charlie and like sanitize. Something, somehow. In Boston, where does a mountain lion come from? Is that his girlfriend? Maybe they escaped from the zoo. Well, I doubt that, otherwise they would just say so. Oh, they're gonna get a poor mountain lion killed. <sighs> Olivia's like... Charlie, hey. What's up? Uh, it's okay? important. 
Yeah, you might not be. Right. Um, but you may not be. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get you to Walter's lab. We need to somehow do something to kill the, the eggs in you. I think you may be carrying its offspring. You trying to tell me that I'm pregnant? <laughs> kind of. So? Ten times magnification. <gasps> I saw something. I saw it. I saw it. Is that it? Yep. You're pregnant. How do you kill it? I can't simply remove them. I've already spread throughout his system. Well, wait, wait, uh, there has to be a way that we can kill them. That you can do. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's something you can hey, do, right? look at me. You can't check out right now. We cannot let this man die. Don't you think I know that, Peter? Yeah, I think he's already panicking because he doesn't want Charlie to... Agent Farnsworth, draw 25 milliliters of blood. Peter, get some trichloramide. What are you going to do? Poison them. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Oh, it's just freaking hanging out there? In the middle of the city? Walter has a theory. He thinks he knows a way he can trick the larvae into self-destructing. How do we do that? Well, we'd have to transfuse Charlie with the creature's blood, mix the mother's blood in with his own. Okay, how are you going to find this creature and get its blood? It's got three... It's at this park? Right. Child, 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 go. Tuck, come out of there. Hurry, tuck, tuck, tuck. <laughs> I think it's traveling underground. It makes sense it not being seen. If it's traveling in the sewer, then we have nothing. Walter, it's okay. We're making progress. No, oh, you tell Agent Francis it's okay. He's upset. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Can't we? Predict I don't know, where it's like gonna go. It or something? Are you actually suggesting that we go down into the sewers and wait for this thing to eat us? Well, no. Yes. Yes. Only no. It's not interested in food. No. But we do have something that it is interested in. It's babies. They are quite protective of their young. The we can survive the encounter is the more intriguing question. Mm, you're whispering that part, aren't you? It's not a good idea, Liv. You got a better idea. Don't get hurt for me. Well, that's not really very fair, considering you would do the same thing for me. She's right. <laughs> what is it? Oh, she just told me a really funny joke. Tell me. The patient goes to his doctor, and he says, if I give up wine, women, and song, will I live longer? And the doctor says, well, no, but it'll feel longer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's funny. I do. No, you don't. Are you going to be home for dinner? I don't know. All right, well, I will see you when you get home. And I love you, babe. Even more for laughing at that joke. And I love you, too. You know, I asked for more about Charlie as a person. I didn't want this. At first is the song I used to sing to Rufus. Our dog. When he was young, he used to have night terrors. Aww. Van Amberg is the man who goes to all the shows. I need to tinkle. Could either of you direct me to the facilities? <laughs> You're in the sewer, Walter. He's joking. What's he doing? Hey, I'll open this up right now. That's not part of the I'm plan. I'm afraid I can't do that, Peter. No one else is going to get hurt. This thing is a mistake. And I'm going to correct it alone. Walter, what are you doing? Open this gate right now. You're right, Peter. I live in a society, and I need to clean up after myself. Walter, this is not your fault. Yeah. Walter, is that the trichloramide? No, 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 no! What are you doing? That's gonna kill you! Should the creature consume me, it will only be poisoning itself. Afterwards, you remove its blood and save Agent Francis. Walter, what are you doing? I don't want you to do this, okay? Do you hear what I'm saying? I do not want you to do this! Should I live as an antidote in the lab? 
which I should ingest within the hour. Walter, stop right there. Walter, come back here! Stop right now! Why? I mean, I know why, but... God. If he lives through this, I'm gonna kill him myself. Then Peter's tried so hard to protect Walter, and, like, then he does this, and it's just, like, ah. Uh. Behind him. That goo stuff was at the in the car. Walter! Walter! mentioned that the poison would kill me within the hour. Did either of you happen to notice the time? Oh my god, fucking hurry. Sonia and I have been talking a lot lately. About having kids? Not having a baby. You're right. What you said before about the consequences. I don't think of them, never have. Don't know if I can. It's not who I am. I know. That's why you but have. you're brave today. Yeah. You know, I should really uh, invest in some, some Kleenex <laughs> with the way that, that I cry. I, sh I should 100% invest in some Kleenex. <sighs> you guys, this episode, ironically gave me like one what I asked for in the last episode <laughs> and two just something that I always love which is more Walter and more depth into his character and his and Peter's dynamic and I am more emotionally wrecked for it <laughs> it's like it's like you can have what you want but you're gonna cry about it <laughs> Which I should expect, honestly. Let's talk about what we learned about Charlie in this episode, which is what I was requesting in the last episode's post-episode discussion. I was like, you know, I want more about Charlie and Broyles and this episode, literally the next episode, they were like, oh, did, did you want more Charlie? Like you, you wanted to know a little bit more about him personally? Okay, here you go. <sighs> So we learned that he is married. I do not recall his wife's name. If we learned it, I did not write it down. But we learned that he is he is indeed married and they seem to have a really cute relationship. And they're even thinking of having a baby. So I don't know if this experience is going to cement his decision to or to not have a baby but that'll be interesting going forward to see if we see more of their relationship unfold and more of his his home life i really like the relationship between olivia and charlie and i think yeah i just think that he's a good person and i was a little worried about him in this episode but i'm glad that he's going to be okay and we're going to be able to hopefully keep learning more and seeing more glimpses into who he is and his life. <sighs> mm. Sorry you guys, I need a coffee. Um, we also learned a little bit more about, or didn't learn, we saw a little bit more of Peter and Olivia's sister Rachel's relationship like he called and Olivia answered and she's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, hey, actually I'm calling for uh, Rachel. And then there was that kind of awkward moment and Olivia thinking about it. And I don't approve. <laughs> I ship Olivia and Peter and I'm very invested in Olivia and Peter. So, I'm very iffy about this. If they want to just be friends, if they want to be like 
you know, friends, <laughs> then that's okay. But I don't like the flirtatious implications that have been present in previous episodes and I am not here for that sort of flirtation between the two of them so yeah I'm keeping an eye on it I'm watching it and I'm hoping that the writers are just you know just fucking with me and they're not gonna like go down down that road so we'll see Something else, <coughs> excuse me, something else that's worth mentioning in this episode is that the sort of villain, antagonist, whatever, of the episode is a creature that was genetically modified to exist. And I think it's, it's really interesting because in a lot of these episodes, there is a bad guy, right? Like the person who's doing it or, um, actually I, I would say that in a lot of the episodes, I think that the people who do the things are oftentimes victims. And I think that in this episode, that is true as well, even though it's an animal. Like I feel bad for the animal because it doesn't, it did not ask to be created in the first place. It didn't ask to come into the world and to exist in this warped, twisted, sort of genetically modified way. And then it didn't ask for the door to be opened and to be let out and to, you know, exist in that way. So it's just doing what comes naturally to an animal, which is uh, reprodu trying to reproduce and killing those who get in its way. And yeah, I don't know. I think that it's just at the end when Walter killed the animal, obviously that's what I wanted to happen because I didn't want for Olivia and Peter or Walter to be killed by the animal. But you can't help but feel bad for the animal because it's not really its fault, you know? It's not... Yeah, it's not culpable in the way that a human who was choosing to do those things would be culpable, in my opinion. Yeah. I also think that it's interesting, the the animal activists and the testing on animals, which I don't agree with. I think that cruelty-free is, is the way to go. Um, but besides that, um, I do think that it's kind of weird to just open the cages and let the animals out because... <laughs> I don't I don't know that that's actually helping them because are you letting them out of the building one two are these animals equipped to survive in the wild or are you actually trying to actively seek a place for these animals to exist like if they were taking them out of the cages putting them into like carriers to try to take to animal sanctuaries refuges um, and places like that then I would maybe feel more inclined to side with these people. It's kind of ironic that they're supposedly animal activists, but they're not really helping the animals. They're doing a very performative thing that doesn't actually help the animals that they're purporting to help. So, I don't know, just my opinion. I think the major thing that I want to talk about in this episode and take away from this episode and try to dissect in this post episode discussion is Walter and Walter's guilt, Walter's decision making, Walter's psyche and state of mind in this episode, because I think it's very interesting. We had, we had Walter and Peter kind of on edge, right? They were arguing at the beginning of the episode. They were butting heads and butting heads and Walter is, or Peter is trying to get Walter to think about other people, right? He's like, you can't just go through life. Like you're the only person that your actions affect. Your actions affect other people. And when you're doing these things that affect other people, you need to then think about the other people that you're affecting. You can't you don't live in a bubble, so you can't act like you live in a bubble. 
separate from the rest of society and other people, particularly those inside your, you know, general area, you know, like your, I want to say bubble, but your, your bubble of people, you know, to mix metaphors, I guess. But, but we got that. And then we got Walter sort of really internalizing that and thinking about what Peter said and taking it to heart. And when he saw the schematics for the creature that he had tried to genetically modify because he could, you know, because he thought it would be interesting, then he felt that guilt of, I could have been the one who did this and I didn't think about other people. I didn't think how it would impact other people. I just thought, hey, this would be a really fascinating scientific discovery, scientific thing to do, so I'm gonna do it. And then now later, you know, thanks to Peter's sort of prodding, he is internalizing that and thinking about the ways that his decision could have affected other people. And you really saw that displayed the most prominently when he's faced with Charlie and Charlie's like, you know, don't say sorry, like it's not your fault. And he thinks it is his fault. And he's like, he wants to apologize. He wants to make amends. He wants to do something that he feels would be significant enough in that moment to make up for what he feels that he did. And I just, I really, I really loved this, this deep dive, this aspect of Walter's character being explored in this episode because we don't see that side of Walter very much. But I do think that there is a part of Walter that very deeply cares for people and that he, he doesn't often show it. And so at, in that moment in the sewers when he says something kind of nonsensical or like TMI, you know, like Walter does a lot. And Peter and Olivia are kind of like mm, dismissive of what he said. And then he uses that to trap them and to try to protect them and to, in his mind, make amends for the things that he has done wrong even though he didn't actually do it and that moment really got to me because Peter has tried so hard to protect Walter right he he keeps you know mentally physically he's trying to protect him because he has his dad back in his life and that's something that he never truly fully had and it's so important to him to try to hold on to this relationship and to hold on to Walter. And in that moment, there was nothing he could do. And Walter is trying to protect him and Olivia. And I just, I really loved seeing that moment and the, the conversation between the two of them and just the mirrored worry and concern and care that they both displayed in that moment. I just, it really, it got to me and I really enjoyed to see it. And I like that Walter sort of got to make his amends, you know, and that he <laughs> still joking, like he got to be jokey and funny and Walter throughout it. And I'm really happy that Peter told him that he was, that he was brave at the end and to have that moment between the two of them is is really nice. And to have the moment of, of Walter sort of acknowledging that Peter was right, that he does think of himself a lot and he doesn't always or ever think of the consequences of his actions on other people. And that he doesn't know if he's capable of that because he's so used to not thinking that way 
And I think that the fact that he did what he did at the end of the episode is indicative of the fact that he is capable of, of thinking that way and of trying to help. So I just thought it was a really good moment and a really good character moment and relationship moment for both Walter and Walter and Peter and yeah. I hope I explained that well. Uh, speaking of Walter, I also really loved the moment where he's talking to Peter and Olivia and he's saying that he used to sing a song to Rufus because he would get uh, night terrors, right? Um, and Rufus was their dog. And to me, that's indicative of a person who is caring and considerate and does think about other people. You know, maybe he doesn't do it in the same way or in such an overt way as other people and he might not be as outwardly kind and caring as like Olivia or Peter but somebody who's willing to sing to their dog to help them get through night terrors is a good person you know at heart and at their core like I don't think bad people would take the time to do that so I love that little tidbit and moment of information. I also really, really, really want to meet Peter's mom because I need to see that dynamic. I need to see it. I need to see it play out. And I, I need to probably cry about it, but I'm really curious to, to meet Peter's mom and Walter's ex-wife. I felt like there was a lot in this episode also about like the idea of should we do the things that we're capable of doing just because we're capable of doing them, i.e. genetically modifying uh, or creating a gen genetically modified creature. And I think that the answer to that question lies in a series of movies called Jurassic Park. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. That's just, not, that's all I'm saying. And that is all that I will say. <laughs> I think I am done rambling at you guys. Thank you as always so much for watching. If you want, you can like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. You can also watch the next episode right now over on Patreon, as well as the entire full length reaction to this episode. Um, yeah, I think that is all that I really have to say. I think I already said that. Until next time. Bye guys.